Welcome to Coding with Sig Flakes 22 of 40, JavaScript Part 2. We'll be looking at variables today. Now, variables in JavaScript is very important because variables is like a container. When the user enters a response, it puts it into a variable you've declared. And then you can use the variable in all sorts of manners to manipulate and process and then produce an output for the user. And the variable is exchanged with whatever the user's typed in give the impression that somehow the computer's intelligent but it's not really okay so let's get started we open up a text editor and we type in the basic html structure doc type html with an exclamation in front of it indicates the browser they're using html version 5 we start the html web page here and we finish the web page there html on html off here head on head off means whatever I type here is going to happen behind the scenes the user won't see it body on body off will mean that the user can see most of the components here as for the display on the screen okay we're going to let the browser know that we're going to be using an additional language to HTML in this case we'll be using a language called JavaScript an interactive language now to let the browser know that you're using JavaScript you type in the tag script now this is different to style style means using CSS script means using JavaScript so now the browser knows there's an additional language here totally different to HTML different instructions different formats different syntax so it knows to prepare for that and append it to the HTML page that's telling the browser we're using JavaScript now all uh, I'll be using a procedural approach to JavaScript and as opposed to the object oriented approach you see in W3 schools. Uh, I like the procedural approach because it's neat and tidy, keeps things, things um, together, and later on you can actually extract the JavaScript from the main web page and put it somewhere else as external uh, JavaScript uh, style sheet. Now, with JavaScript, uh, you've got to have a function. So, function is um, how the script works. Now you give the function a name. I'm going to give the, the name personal. So personal is the name of giving this function and all functions must have a parenthesis an opening and closing bracket. There's, there's curved brackets. Very similar to what I'm about to do now. Now whatever instructions you've got in the function must start with a brace, an opening brace and a closing brace. Braces are squiggly uh, brackets if you like as opposed to the round ones is a parenthesis is a brace so now whatever I'm top in there is going to be JavaScript instructions for the function I've called personal now the first instruction I'm going to give it is that I want to use a variable so JavaScript now knows I'm using a variable it says what do you want it needs to know what you're going to call a variable is it X or Y or Z like an algebra X plus Y equals Z they're variables so what do you call a variable long to call the variable name so JavaScript now knows I call it a variable name. Now JavaScript needs to know what is the name going to be. Well, the name is going to be a document dot get element by ID. Now that is a JavaScript syntax. You get all these syntax from W3 schools, okay? And that's saying there's going to be a box, a container set up on screen, right? That's what it's saying there and the user is going to put something in there, type something in there so it knows what type of structure so what do you call this box, this container the user is going to type in, uh, type, uh, type in information well I'm going to call it, call it name input again you can give it any name you want it must be qu within quotations that's the name I've given the box that's going to contain the data from the user so now uh, close that off and it's going to be a value given from the user. So all that does it says the variable name is going to have whatever the user types in inside the box. He's going to type inside the box, and this particular box or field, if you like, is going to be called name input. Give it whatever name you want. Okay, what are you going to do with it? Well, document write is a JavaScript syntax, and whatever I type in, it's got to have, again JavaScript have everything in parentheses. But whatever I type in quotations here is going to be print exactly what I type. So nice to meet you. So I put in this point in time, 
and it's going to type exactly that, nothing more. Okay. Right. Now that's the script I've got so far. I'm going to build on it, but for now it's a, it's a starter. Let's just test it out. And I'll put something like I want to, oh, sorry, want to know more about you. I'm trying to make it personal, like, you know, like as if I'm interacting with the user, but I'm not really. Uh, let's get started. Shall we? Okay, and uh, what is your name? That's my interaction to the user. Right, let's just save this. File, save as. I'll call this one JavaScript2. Save it as HTML. Save. And it's all saved. That's the, that's the starting point. It's not the program I want at this point in time. I'm going to run it with uh, Chrome. Let's run on Chrome and what do we get? I want to know more about you. Let's get started, shall we? What is your name? Okay, first of all, before I go any further, I'm going to tidy up a bit. Let's put a, make this a header, header 3. This is using HTML, not JavaScript. Uh, header 3. And if I save that and refresh it here, it's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, right here I want a paragraph break. Okay, it's the HTML. It's not um, JavaScript. Save, refresh, and I've got a bit of a break there. Okay, now this part's interesting. This part is going to put up um, a button, right? Oh, not a button, sorry, not for now. We're going to put an input type. So, display an input ID. So, this is HTML equals name input, right? Type equals text. Actually, this is not HTML, this is actually JavaScript. So I'm saying, display right here a, f a container. The container's got to be, uh, it's got to enter some data here. These got to enter some data here. The name variable's got to pick up the data from the container and dump it into the variable called name. Okay. Now, that's all I need at this point in time. Um, let's just have a look at it so far. So you can see what happened. What did happen? There's a container right there. Actually, I don't want the container next to it, so I'm going to put a break in here. Right, break, save, refresh. Now I've got the container down the bottom. So there's an input container. In other words, I type something in. Okay, there you go. And it's going to... Uh, uh, the container's called name input. This is going to grab name, the variable name, grab, grab the information from the user and put it in the variable. Okay, what is going to do? Well, the user needs to know to uh, to finish, basically, I suppose. Let's put a button here. Button. Type this one here. Unlike input ID, that's JavaScript. Button type is HTML. Button. It's going to be a button type. Okay. It could be any kind of button, but I want an ordinary button. And on click. On click means whenever the user clicks, you start something. What are we going to start? Well, we're going to start the function. The function called, there it is, personal, personal, personal. Okay. And it's going to have parentheses. That's going to start the function. But the button is a label. Without that, there's, going to, there's no label. Let's just save that to show what I mean. If I was to refresh it now, there's a button there, but it does nothing really. The user will know what it is. So I type in a, a label, enter. Enter, and I'll finish the button right here. So that should put an enter there. Let's just save this first. Refresh that. And there we go. So let's just type in a name now. Let's type in Paul. Enter. Nice to meet you. There you go. It got what's happened is that it caught the function personal. It's come up here and it's followed these instructions. And it says nice to meet you. But that's not very personal. I want to make it more personal than that. So what I'm going to do is I want to play around with the document right. I want a better response than that to make it really appear like the computer's intelligent, but it's not. The IQ of the computer is zero, but we're going to pretend it's more than that. Now, I'm going to play around with a string. String is quotations. Whatever type in quotations will be displayed on the, the screen. Now, I'm going to add to that a variable. So, variables are string two different things. Variables means whatever's inside the container called name, show it now. Okay, let's have a look at it. Refresh, let's type in Mary. 
and nice to meet you, Mary. Okay, so it's starting to appear like it's personal. Notice you and Mary doesn't have a space. You've got to force a space right over here, force it in there, and you've got to anticipate this before you, you know, before you give it to any user. And let's type in uh, type in Bill. Okay, type in Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. Now there's no real punctuations occurring, uh, so it's quite artificial at this point in time. Let's add some punctuation. So plus. Now we go back to a string and put a full stop. Okay, string means whatever is inside the string will be printed exactly as it is. Save this, refresh it, and type this time we should type in um, Helen. Enter. Nice to meet you, Helen, with a full stop. Okay, that's looking pretty good at this point in time. Okay, I'll have to tidy up a little bit there. There's only have other spaces. Um, save that, it's done nothing at all. But if I play this again, here's an interactive program, it appears like it's intelligent. What is your name? And I'm going to type in um, Chris. So stop in Chris. And Christ, oh, Chris, there again. Nice to meet you, Chris. Okay, and that's it for now with variables and trying to make it, make your program appear intelligent. Thank you for watching.